we've got this timber land that we sell the trees to the sawmills. You know, people have, have said that expectation was put on you. I guess there was a lot of pressure. And I said, absolutely not, no. This business chose me. Well, I grew up in Arkadelphia, which is a small college town. It was wonderful. I, I really had a, a nice childhood. We had lots of friends. Everybody sort of knew everybody. James Garrison Clark was my great-grandfather, and he was one of many children, large, large family. His father was a buffalo hunter for the railroad. But he must have been a pretty good businessman because he managed to put together some funds and open a sawmill. They would acquire these tracts of land very cheaply dollar an acre, and they didn't pay much attention to that. It was just feeding that mill. He built some fairly sizable timber holdings, and then after World War II, the price of timber went way, way, way up, and they felt like they could get out of the sawmill business and just sell the timber. When I got out of college, we went to Houston. I worked in the Texas Heart Institute there for about, about four years. It just was transient. I couldn't see myself doing it the rest of my life. Why not? go back home. We've got this family business. Oh, what if I like it? And so we started trying to figure out how a daughter and a father would would run a timber business. We would sit down and begin technical stuff of, of how you found it and how you described it on a map and different ways you can manage this. And uh, I really liked it. He died from a heart attack when he was 65. It was a big blow to, to us. We didn't expect that. It was, you know, he seemed to be the picture of health, and then he was gone. But I thought, oh, this is gonna be really bad for our family if for some reason I can't do this. I was one nervous wreck when I went out to sell the first track of timber because I felt like we could negotiate a price and get where we wanted to go. But what would I do if we couldn't? But uh, it all went well, and I was pleased with, with how we negotiated. Before Daddy passed away, I had gotten really active in the Forestry Association and also the Forestry Commission. And that was what they used to call it women's lib. You know, it was that, that movement was really strong. And there was a lot of pressure, I think, on groups to have a woman on your board or have a woman on your committee. And in the timber business, <laughs> that was it. I remember when I was 25, probably, sitting at a table on the executive committee of the Forestry Association, and I was looking around, and there was the head of Weyerhaeuser and Georgia Pacific, and Willamette and Potlatch and Deltic, and me. I loved it. I got to hear how men of that caliber thought, what the perspective was, how they made decisions. We finally realized on the commission that the youngest piece of equipment we had was over 20 years old. And four of us just put our foot down in the commission and said, we gotta adjust our personnel and get this money back into the maintenance. And by the time I left, our oldest piece of equipment was around 10 to 11 years old, and we were effective. Another thing that's a big deal to me is that, that uh, I'm part of the Ross Foundation that is now 64,000 acres of timberland. The way it works is we manage these timberlands uh, for conservation. They're open to the public and for recreation. And the, the colleges do research up there, Henderson and Washita. And then when we harvest, those are the, the revenues that we use to fund the philanthropic program. I did enjoy being a part of these organizations. I've enjoyed participating in my community very much. I felt like my job when I got this was to take this family business and get it down to the next generation safe and sound, hopefully in better shape than it was, and I think I'm there. I hope that if people are turned toward community work or the, the things that I've done on the, the boards and things, I hope they'll do it because there is so much more reward that you get back from these things than, than you give. And, and this is what my parents did. This is what I saw them do. They gave back all the time to their communities. And I do think that's the motivation of why I feel like I'm supposed to do that too. There's so much that can be done out there and, and you think you may not be getting much accomplished, but you are and you're gonna get so much more back.